uh, to get you started. If there are any technical issues, put them in the chat and I'll do my best to help. Uh, but with that, I think Memphis, I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, evening, depending on where you're calling in from. We appreciate you being with us today. Uh, my name is Memphis Huff V. I am with Macrometer, a flow meter manufacturer in California, USA. Um, I serve as the product manager for our electromagnetic or mag meters. Um, and I've been Macrometer almost six years. I love the culture. Uh, along with us, we have some special guests uh, from one of our partners, the Avanti Company. Uh, so I'll first turn it to Tim Devlin to introduce himself um, and his colleague. Uh, this, hi, I'm Tim Devlin, uh, president of the Avanti Company. We've been a uh, rep for Macrometer for uh, almost or uh, over 40 years. Um, we reside in the uh, wonderful central part of Florida. And I'll turn it over to John. I'm John Corey. I'm the vice president of sales for the Avanti Company. Um, we represent Macrometer in Florida, Georgia, and Alabama, um, and uh, uh, are really, really happy with uh, our relationship with them and our ability to serve the customers for them. Thank you, John. And last but certainly not least, we'll turn it over to Tim Dorr. Good morning, everybody. My name is Tim Dorr. I'm uh, the sales development manager for Municipal for Macrometer. Uh, I've been, been with Macrometer for seven years. Uh, I'm a seasoned um, product and marketing manager with the uh, utility background. Uh, I know I speak with a funny accent. I apologize. Uh, I'm actually based in Europe, so I look after the Macrometer sales for Europe and Africa, uh, as well as the role of uh, Municipal Sales Development Manager for, for the global team. So today we are going to talk through measure the immeasurable. So it's a bit of a discussion piece. Um, so John, Tim and Memphis and I will, will walk you through some of the challenges we've seen in uh, the industry, some of the challenges that are happening right now with the aging infrastructure that we've got. So um, feel free to put questions in, in on the chat and we'll try and get them to the end of the, the We'll try to get to them at the end and uh, we'll um, hopefully have a good discussion about some of the challenges that you guys are facing and some of the solutions that we feel might be able to help you. Uh, and we also encourage you to raise your questions verbally as the discussion goes on. We want this to be interactive, uh, so don't hide behind your screens. Uh, we want to engage with you. So let's jump right in. Uh, OK, so um, one of the biggest problems that we're seeing, challenges that we're facing in the industry at the moment is that we've got um, an aging infrastructure. We've got our pipe networks, our distribution, our transmission mains that are seeing ever more demand, uh, whether that being in pumping stations. Our cities and towns are growing at a far faster rate than when we originally designed plant and put the plant in, say, 50, 60, 70 years ago. So we're now always having to think, oh, if only we had a measurement point here, if only we had a measurement point there. But at the time, you know, the engineering team that put that piece of equipment in or pipe network never thought, never thought of that. So they're always on the back foot afterwards thinking, oh, I wish I could get a measurement point there. But the challenges of big pipe and then getting a measurement point is the infrastructure often restricts us where we can actually measure and monitor the flow in the area that we really want to. So what you can actually see here are some installations uh, of the FPI flow meter. So the uh, FPI mag is made by Micrometer in the US in Hemet uh, and is a full profile insertion flow meter, which actually allows you to install it through a tapping point uh, on the top of the main and insert it all the way in. The reason it's quite unique and cool for this type of application is it has multiple electrodes running all the way up and down the actual um, body of the sensor, measuring the velocity at different points. That then allows us then to understand exactly the flow that's going through the whole pipe uh, and give you a very good accuracy. Because it's got all of those electrodes measuring the accuracy across the whole of the pipe, 
it means it can cope with flow disturbances much more better than, say, a traditional clampon would or an insertion meter. Um, often you don't have the room to get a full bore in, which is what most of us would want to do, is we want to put a full bore in, we know we're going to get good accuracy, we know a full bore would cope with many things up and downstream. But nine times out of ten, we just don't get that room. So they're the challenges that we're, that we're seeing in the, in the industry today. So I'm going to hand it over to uh, uh, Tim and John. I'm going to talk through a couple of these uh, installations. So, um, John, do you want to take it from here? Sure. Um, what we found in the marketplace is that when we go visit our customers, you know, they've got meters. They, they have, you know, the meters at the wells. They've got a meter you know, leaving the plant, but it's places that they they need to meter that they just have never been able to put a meter before. And because the FPI can be put in places with very little upstream, downstream, straight run, as you can see in these pictures, um, we now can put them, you know, we can now measure them in, in places we just couldn't measure before. And it's creating you know, a whole new market for the utilities um, to have places to to put a meter. Um, one of the things that's that we try to do as a distributor for micrometer is when we have to put a meter in a challenging place. If you look at the picture on the upper left, um, you know you can see a valve, you can see a ninety, and you can see a meter right there. Um, you know, when we need to put a meter in a place like that, what we try to do is also offer um, somewhere upstream or downstream to strap on an ultrasonic flow meter uh, to verify that application. It's really a good idea anytime you put in a meter, if you can verify it against another meter, even if the ultrasonic meter doesn't have the same accuracy as the mag meter, the FPI is a half a percent meter and the ultrasonic is normally a 2% meter. Um, but at least you get to corroborate the, the reading um, and make yourself feel more comfortable that the meters in an application is going to give you good, good readings. So um, Memphis, can you go to the next slide? If you look at the center lower picture there, you'll see a picture of the FPI full profile insertion mag, and then we've strapped on an ultrasonic meter um, upstream of it. You can see the arrow, um, and we're verifying the flow from the ultrasonic meter and also the flow from the FPI. Um, and it, you know, it's always it doesn't matter whether it's an FPI or any other meter. It's always good to verify um, that you've got a good application because you can see anything you want on a specification sheet, um, but it's really in situation that you get to identify whether the meter's in the right place and whether it's whether it's working properly. Tim, you want to add? Tim Devlin, you well, want to add? To that? Well, I would just say that when, when you put a, an FPI in a tough application and you have the ability to strap on a uh, ultrasonic meter, it gives you know the customer a good warm and fuzzy that Maybe they thought they knew what the flow was on that pipe, uh, but when you put it in and it's showing flow, ah, geez, I didn't think it was, you know, I thought it was a lot more than that. And then if you can put two meters in at the same time, like you see there, and they match, um, you know, then they really know. So not that the FPI isn't fully tested at the factory and, and, um, and you gotta believe that it's accurate, um, but to see that, it does help the customer, especially when you're doing large pipes, 72, 96, like that top left one. What size is that one, by the way? It's a 138 inch, 138 inch. So yeah, the largest, largest FPI we do is 138 inches, which uh, in uh, European money is 3.3 meters in size. So, um, can you imagine what the cost of a 3.3 meter full bore mag would be? Can you imagine the size of the chamber that you would need to put in, the vault that you would need to put in for that? 
the infrastructure, the cost, the expense, the craneage, just the health and safety team that you would need to put a large full bore mag in. If you guys are doing this on a regular basis, you, you understand that that is a massive cost. With an FPI, what you need to do is put a two inch MPT valve on the top on a tapping. Yes, you may want to. I think on one of the bottom pictures there, it shows a, a saddle. Probably want to put a saddle on it. That would make sense. Um, but that's really the infrastructure. You might have a small chamber over the top. I think it was one of the pictures earlier on on one of the other slides show the top of the FPI coming out of the top of a chamber, a small little chamber. So you're re significantly going to reduce not just your measurement cost, i.e. the cost of the instrument, but you're going to reduce your installation costs. Now, if you can reduce your installation costs, that's going to be a capex saving for you as well. Not to mention your opex saving, because if you know you need to maintain this meter or something goes wrong with the meter, then you pull it out. It's not like you've then got a flow meter just sitting there dead forever. You know you can take the instrument out. So that there's some of the real real benefits of using the FPI technology in these in these types of applications. You can see there on the one on the right hand side. Sorry, Tim, I'll just come back to you in a second. How close you can get to the wall, the concrete wall there. You can see all the uh, the bolt, the flange connections as it's going to go through into a 90 or a T bend there. You know, you'd always want to try and get a mag in there. You can't get a clamp on on. You can't get anything else in there, but you can get an FPI. The FPI allows you to measure the immeasurable. Mr. Devlin. I was just going to say the top middle picture there, you can see yeah. towards the top. Um, that is actually what we call the signal converter. Some people call the display. Um, yeah that is either strain relief connected or we do have quick connect options. Uh, and I, Memphis, you can remind me how far away can you get that display? What's the max? Depending on the power, so battery powered has a restriction of 25 feet, uh, but you get up to 500 feet for our powered converters. So you could locate that display in a, easy place to read due to the fact you can take it on an AC powered up 500 feet away. We'll look at, we'll have to look at some of the applications uh, these play in. Uh, we do want to offer time for some interactive questions as well. You do have one question in the chat. Has recommended placement changed? I thought no, it was. I, I, I will. I will okay. um, I will visit the chat, respond to those questions, and I turn it over to Tim. Um, and of course, feel free to verbally raise your questions as well if something comes up that speaks specific to you. Tim. Okay, just just wanted to go through some of the applications as well. And um, um, obviously, the FPI can be used in multiple places. So, from distribution, from DMAs, trunk mains, the main network there. Obviously anywhere we, where you would expect to see a full bore mag. But also, I think we've shown a couple of examples of booster stations, pumping stations, you know, right on um, source, raw water, abstraction, wells and pumps, all the way through the, the treatment plant places, you know, filtered water, filter beds, treatment plant, dosing uh, applications. The FPI is so versatile uh, that it can be used across all those applications. Starts at four inch, goes all the way up to 138 inch. Um, I think as the guys have said, you know, various different outputs, etc. cetera. Um, mains powered, battery powered, solar powered options in there, DC power. Um, comes with all the comms that you would expect, four to 20. Um, pulsed outputs as well, and your AMI device, uh, device readers as well. So uh, like the ITRON sensors, et cetera. So all of those things are catered for you as well. Um, it's a really, simple unit as uh, Tim Devlin said you know we, we do provide quick connect connectors and um, so you can make that connector nice and easily onto the instrument. Um, two guys can install an FPI within around about 25 minutes to 30 minutes that's how simple an installation is. We provide a very simple installation tool uh, which allows that um, the, the the partner to be able to install it nice and easily uh, and, and at the right rate so that it goes in absolutely straight. Um, it's a very simple device. So we move on one slide, I think, Memphis. Brilliant. But don't forget as well, you know, the FPI 
or it's targeted at Muni can also be used in other applications. So cooling water, fire water, feed water, and of course, raw water. So we're do covering all of these different applications as well. And then the next one. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so here's so where we have, uh, this is the summary of the unit we're discussing. So those application pictures you've seen is the FPI mag, which stands for full profile insertion. As Tim mentioned, we have electrodes down the full profile of that sensor, which gets you that plus or minus half percent accuracy comparable to that of a full bore with much simpler installation costs. You're not buying flanges, you're not stopping your service, you're not cutting pipe. Uh, so those hard to reach applications, tight spaces, huge pipes, buried pipes uh, is where this meter really plays well. Uh, the meter is NSF 61 drinking water and 372 low lead certified ranging from four inch to 130 inch uh, nominal, a huge range of installation sizes uh, to fit your needs. Uh, and it is bi-directional. There's two models, a single direction, a bi-direction, so we can read your reverse flow as well. At this point, this is where I wanna open it up to our attendees. There was a question in the chat, and of course, thank our special guests for helping us. Uh, there was a question in the chat regarding placement. Noted, I thought it was supposed to be installed perpendicular to bins, and I see several installed at an angle. Um, and so people can view images. I'll go back to some of the application slides. Um, has the recommendation changed? Uh, so I begin to, and I'll open it up to the team to discuss. I began to type into the chat. Uh, it's dependent on the obstruction. Um, we have extensive uh, guidelines in our literature, in our manuals, of what the proper placement is based on your obstruction. Uh, but Avanti Company or, or Tim Dorr, if you'd like to comment on that question as well, uh, specific yep, sure. to bins. Yep, so the placement can be also designated to exactly what's going on within um, the application itself. So if we understand the uh, application and it's got a double S bend, for example, as you can see on the one on the bottom right near the pumping station, we know the flow rates. We can even put some CFD analysis in there to work out where the best place to actually place that instrument would be to get the best accuracy. Um, but normally with what we're trying to do is get the meter into a place that we're going to achieve the best measurement um, for that actual application. Tim, John, do you want to add anything to that? I think it might be a good idea for John just to maybe go back to that one slide and just talk about the district metering and the success that we've had with that just a little bit. Yeah, it's it's kind of a new application. Can Memphis, can you go back to the map slide? Um, you know, right here, if you look at the lower right hand, the distribution system and the FPI that's at the lower right part of your screen, um, because the FPI only needs a two inch tap, um and it's removable um it's become really the meter for district metering areas as we chase non-revenue water um it's really the first arrow in our quiver um to find non-revenue water because we can choose an area we can put an fpi in places that you can't just put other meters and it's less expensive than putting a full bore mag um, and so you can isolate a, an area um, and then you can measure the water going into that area and you can compare it against the residential and commercial meters that are in that area. Now, most utilities have automatic meter reading or advanced metering infrastructure because there's a smart output on the FPI. Um, you can hook most um, radio endpoints to it um, and like census and itron and others um, so that you can you can then look at how much water is is going through the revenue meters how much water is common area water and how much water um, is actually being pumped into the area um, and identify your non-revenue water and and more and more utilities we just had a uh, utility in Alabama um, decide to to do this. They bought 15 FPIs 
for their district areas um, and because you know they want they want to measure every district so they can then go after the ones that have the highest um, non revenue water uh, issues um, and then obviously they're going to put leak, go for leak detection of some sort um, to try to find and pinpoint the leaks in in those areas that have seem to have the worst problems so it's a new application for uh, FBI in the US and uh, um, but we we're doing it in many many utilities now and the other thing is that you can put that FPI in an area of district metering and it'd be battery powered so you don't necessarily have to have AC there and uh, that's that's been a key in some of these applications absolutely thank you appreciate that insight team uh, there was a question regarding accuracy, plus or minus half a percent. Yes, uh, we can get up to half a percent accuracy. All of our meters are wet calibrated uh, before they leave our site. I see we have a hand up. Uh, Christopher Moss. Hi, Christopher Moss coming um, out of Florida from Tampa Bay Water. I have a question about the, uh, the battery life on there. How long uh, will it last and um, uh, what about replacements? those batteries so for battery replacements we have a do-it-yourself kit um, I've walked through the instruction and changed those batteries about 10 minutes to get it back in running uh, battery life is partially dependent on your reporting interval uh, if you have certain features with the meter and you're getting uh, more frequent data than you know twice a day um, that's something we're still analyzing um, a, a lot of our battery power we're getting five years is what we offer um, more frequent sampling, which we're building a table. We're seeing three years, every 15 seconds, we're still analyzing. Um, and we're constantly um, innovating solutions. So if we're getting feedback from our customers. In this application, we need a longer living battery. Then we do that. We have solar options as well. So then you can have, you know, your battery recharging. Um, and all of our converters come with backup batteries as well. So if your main battery starts to fail, you'll get an alarm. That's the low battery and you'll still have that reserve uh, with ample time to get that replaced. I hope that answers your question. Um, and of course, I can send you more details as needed. Memphis, I wanted to comment on the half a percent accuracy. Um, we've had applications where, you know, the utility has said, I need to have a meter here. It, even if I have to install it on a 90 degree bend, which doesn't isn't in the manual, I need to put a meter here. Um, utilities have to decide, you know, the need for a meter and the accuracy required. They don't always require half a percent accuracy. Everybody'd love to have it, but you know, you can make compromises. Um, and that's one of the things that's really good about verifying. You know, I have to have a meter here. Let's put one here and then let's put a, a ultrasonic meter on and verify what the accuracy is. And can I live with that accuracy? Because I need that as a measuring point. I think one of the things I'd uh, just add in there one of the challenges I always get asked uh, about these type of applications is well you know why why can't I just use a single point you know is a single point just good enough or you know why can't I measure at one eighth of the of the, uh, the the pipe size you know why 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 would you go for a full profile so the difference between a, a full profile insertion and a single point style of insertion is that the the full profile allows you to understand everything that's going on in that pipe. So you're not measuring at the half, you're not measuring at the one eighth, you're measuring everything that's going on in that profile. One of the other really amazing things that that does is obviously that reduces the up and downstream links to get that accuracy that you're looking for. Um, so when you are looking for that accuracy and you do need to have that, then the full profile FPI really comes into its own. It, it, then not an issue of it, uh, you know, oh, I've used single points before, single points always vibrate, single points always break, they're, they're, you know, 
our FPI is actually mounted with a spring-loaded mechanism which pushes it down onto the bottom of the pipe. That's how we know we're on the bottom of the pipe and we keep it actually structured. That's how we know that when flow goes past it, that we know that it, it's not going to vibrate. We know that it's not going to move around because it's actually pushed under a spring load actually to secure it to the bottom of the pipe. So again, it's through you know working and, and uh, innovating and finding the ways and solutions of meeting some of the questions that our customers have asked us uh, allows us then to offer that type of solution. Does Macromat have slides regarding your propeller meters? We do, but we just wanted to talk about the FPI today. If you want to jump onto our uh, Macrometer website and have a look at our props, you can see our water specialty props and our prop meters are on there. Um, I see it. Memphis, you've answered the one on the AMR and the uh, AMR questions. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure yeah. if there was, um, yes, yeah, so we're compatible, but I wasn't sure okay. if that answered their, their question. Steve, Steve's just clarifying his question. Do we have our own fixed network? If not, which ones do you work with? Okay, understood. So as far as I'm aware, we do not have our own fixed network for AMR, AMR systems. Um, the most common we deal with are Census, uh, Census and ITRON 6, ITRON 9. Uh, those are the most frequent we deal with. I believe, it, I believe uh, Neptune is it's working with Neptune now as well. It is compatible with Neptune as well. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, we have about four minutes, so don't don't be shy. Ask away. You have experts on the call to help out. There's also there's also YouTube videos that you can watch and you can actually watch uh, FPIs being installed from start to finish. Um, I, I imagine that's on the website. Some of those YouTube links. Yeah, so it's right right there. So youtube.com slash micrometer. So you'd be able to see uh, an actual installation go uh, live and how easy it is. Um, it's uh, very informative. The, there are other videos on there uh, reference uh, more details about the product. But yeah, it's a great call out to that you know, it just shows you how simple uh, a FPI installation is. Um, the, the FPI itself has been around since 2008 in its current form, so it's quite a mature product. It's not, it's not a, you know, a, a brand new untrusted technology. Uh, we're using it globally, uh, I think as John Curry said, um, distribution, trunk mains, networks, non-revenue water, water loss, leakage uh, is, a, is an area that we've really pushed into uh, in Europe and in Africa. Uh, we now have hundreds of FPIs going into the distribution systems in, in the UK and across wider Europe. And we've also been working with teams in Lagos in Nigeria, installing for the same reasons for water loss uh, there. So it, it really is a global product and it is replacing um, some different technologies. Uh, and, and we're trying to measure the trying to measure the immeasurable. They've never ever been able to measure their main or their distribution system at that point before. And they come to us, they ask us some questions, we do some analysis uh, and we provide them a solution. Uh, it's not always a half percent solution, which I think is a good call out from John Corey, but we find them a solution, we give them a solution to the problem. So we allow you to measure what you thought previously you would never ever be able to measure. You, Tim, I see we have about a minute left, so I want to ensure I thank our special guests from Avanti, Tim Devlin and John Corey for assisting. Of course, Tim Dorr with his expertise, everyone who raised the question. Uh, please visit our website, visit our YouTube page, reach out to your local dealer, uh, reach out to the factory if you have questions. We are here to help you. Um, so we have about 45 seconds or so. Any, any last minute burning questions we can help you with? References available upon request. Yep. <laughs> lots and lots of them. Yeah. Hundreds of them. We appreciate Avanti Company appreciates being invited today. Loved having you here. Thank you again.
that. And I, I see we're at time. Um, I'm not sure if AWWA board, Paul, if you'd be taking over at this point. Yes, uh, thanks uh, Memphis and your team for a really informative uh, session. I think uh, we had some a good load of attendees on it. Um, and thanks to you, the attendees for being here and participating. Um, so I think that'll wrap it up for today. Um, Memphis, uh, our our team will follow up with you guys with the, the, the follow up information that comes from this. Okay, thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Memphis. Thank you, John. Thank you, Tim. Cheers, team.